to get out on the roads and in the sky than last year, but Wisconsin's tourism industry is still struggling. What it will take for it to get back to normal. Also, UW-Madison students are back on campus. Why hundreds of them gathered at the terrace today. News 3 Now at 6 begins right now. But first, we have some breaking news. Authorities say that shots were fired at Penn Park this afternoon. That is just off of Fisher Street. Here is a live look at the scene. Our photographer on scene says that the shelter at the park is taped off right now as Madison police investigate. Dane County Dispatch confirms there were shots fired, but they're not able to give us much information, even if anyone was injured. So clearly, this is a developing story, and we will share any updates with you on Channel 3000. Well, the sun is shining today and the temperatures were mild for Labor Day, but we could see a bit of a warm-up this week. Let's check your certified most accurate forecast with meteorologist Dana Fulton. It is still quite pleasant outside. A really nice evening for those of us still trying to wrap up the Labor Day holiday weekend or anyone who might be traveling all the roads. There's a look at Platteville right now where we have a nice, clear, sunny sky. The same, of course, over Madison with our WIC TV sky cam. Temperature-wise in the upper 70s with the light breeze coming in from the north. Dew points in the upper 40s right now, so it is quite comfortable outside. We are pretty close to 80 degrees for Janesville, 78 in Monroe right now, and 80 in Bosco Bell. Dew point-wise, again, overall mid to upper 40s for us throughout southern Wisconsin, so it feels really nice. Overnight temperatures will drop to about 60 in the upper 50s for, for some areas, so a mild start to the day tomorrow. Another very mild afternoon tomorrow with highs back to the upper 70s. It's going to be a little breezy. Easy outside though. Wind speeds about 10 to 20 miles per hour with a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm. So we look ahead to tomorrow afternoon, but we'll take a closer look at that timing and your full work week forecast in just a few minutes. And Dana, thank you. So today, Wisconsin roads were busy, but it's not just today. Summer travel reached record levels, topping not only last summer, but 2019 pre-pandemic. Hotels, restaurants, and other tourist-dependent businesses benefited greatly. But as our Christina Laurie explains, one part of the travel industry is lagging behind. Let's start with the good news. Our bookings in terms of hotels and rental cars uh, have actually been the highest. Um, they, they've been even exceeding 2019 numbers. In May, AAA Wisconsin spokesman Nick Jarmuz declared this the summer of the road trip. And he was right. According to the Wisconsin Department of Tourism, trips of two nights or more are up 5% compared to April 2019. But with COVID cases once again climbing, many people are rethinking their fall plans. Air travel is still sort of lingering behind the rest of travel. Um, still a, a bit of hesitancy for people to, to get in the planes. Recovery is slow at airports across the country, and Dane County Regional is no exception. The recent addition of Miami and Vegas brings the airport's nonstop flight count to 15, but that's down from the 24 it offered pre-pandemic. An airport spokesman says it may take years for more to return. The return of some travel restrictions and mandates. What's already returned are those travel restrictions. So if you're planning a trip this fall, you want to do your research first. Planning in advance is important and then also just being safe. Masking, distancing, testing, and hopes we'll have more good news to share in terms of case counts and travel numbers soon. Reporting in Madison, Christina Laurie, News 3 Now. TSA says it estimates that roughly 3.5 million travelers passed through airports on Friday and Saturday alone. That is more than twice as many compared to last year, but there are still fewer holiday weekend flights than before the pandemic. For example, United and Delta Airlines each expected to fly about 2 million people over the long weekend, which is about 20% lower than 2019. Governor Tony Evers taking the time to thank Wisconsin workers in Milwaukee today. Tahlil Mohdeen shares why he says they are the backbone of our economy. During his speech at a union organized labor fest this morning, Governor Evers credited workers for developing the middle class. He says without union workers, which brought about 40 hour work weeks, minimum wage, and social security, our quality of life wouldn't be the same. He also gave a special thanks to Wisconsin's trade professionals working through the COVID-19 pandemic. And because of that great work during the pandemic, I know it's still ongoing, our, our state has recovered financially better than almost every other state in the nation, it is, and it is due to the essential workers. Governor Evers also used the opportunity to talk about the upcoming election, encouraging people to vote Democrat. He 
also pledged his support for unions and said if re-elected, he would get rid of right to work and go back to supporting prevailing wages. In 2022, his seat, along with the Attorney General's and Republican U.S. Senator Ron Johnson's seat, are up for election. Daily COVID deaths in the U.S. are spiking once again, rising above 1,500 for the first time since March. Health officials had warned unvaccinated Americans not to travel or socialize in large groups over the holiday, with the Delta variant causing hospitalizations across the country. Labor Day also marks the beginning of the school year for many districts, bringing concern that openings could further spread COVID. Data released last week shows a fifth of new COVID cases are among children. What we're learning now is that the little kids who are under the age of 12, not old enough to be vaccinated, are often getting infected from unvaccinated adults. Pediatricians and public health officials say a common respiratory disease that most children can easily deal with is spreading earlier than usual in Wisconsin. The disease called respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, usually results in mild symptoms, but can be severe in infants and older adults. The symptoms for RSV are similar to that of COVID-19, so officials say testing for COVID-19 is important. Pediatricians say some children are getting both illnesses at once. In Wisconsin, RSV cases started climbing in July and have been going up ever since. As of August 21st, 1,630 patients have been tested for RSV and 298 were positive. The doctors and nurses we spoke to have been dealing with COVID nonstop for a year and a half now. And while they are optimistic about the way the virus itself is moving, they're unsure of the long-term impacts this could have on their industry. Adam Duxter was given an inside look into the COVID ward at UW Health. Yeah, we put our sheets off. We wish that the community knew that we have their best interests in mind. We're not trying to hurt anybody's rights by any means. The fight to keep people from dying from COVID-19 is at arguably its most intense point in 2021 for UW Health frontline workers. It, of course, is difficult to care for people who could have prevented their illness, but we can't go back and, and know what they were thinking at the time when they made that choice. And it's taking a toll on many, including hospitalist Sam Murray Boehner. She says in the past, some staff would volunteer to work these shifts. The fear now is about finding people to work them at all. There's plenty of times where there's physical hospital beds that are open for patients, but we don't have the staff to, to actually take care of people in them. So that's very frustrating when we feel like we're bursting at the seams, but you see these open beds, but there's no one to take care of people. Murray Boehner says rather than feeling frustrated with the patients who have refused the vaccine and are now sick, her frustrations are with what she describes as a system of mis- and disinformation online and elsewhere that's largely contributed to the current situation. And while there is hope in data as recent as this week that cases could be on the decline, a staff shortage could create issues that last much longer. Staff is certainly the thing that concerns me more than physical space. I worry both, you know, about just, you know, working our staff so hard that they're stressed out uh, and uh, struggling to, you know, get the energy to come to work every day. Murray Bader says, for now, staff rely on support from one another. And while she's hopeful this won't last forever, she and others have a message for the community who've relied on their help from day one. We need to put the safety of our community and the safety of our children and the safety of our elderly patients, patients with cancer and other illnesses that prevents them to having, from having a strong immune system. We need to put them above our own personal rights or personal political feelings about this pandemic and this vaccine and do the right thing. And that was Adam Duxter reporting. Coming up tonight at 10, we'll show the mental and emotional toll healthcare workers are facing inside that COVID ward. Again, that's tonight on News 3 Now at 10. In more local news, it was a gorgeous day for UW's Madison students to get out to Memorial Union and paint. Around 800 students were out on the terrace today for Paintacular. The free event was put on by Wheelhouse Studios. They provide free painting supplies canvases and brushes for students to paint the infamous terrace chairs. So these are pieces that people are making for themselves, that we're going to walk through um, how to do a lot of the processes, working with color mixing and composition of this, and then people get to take these skills and continue using them and take these pieces that they've made home. Wheelhouse has a list of free events and classes that they offer on its website. It is union.wisc.edu slash wheelhouse. 
The Taliban says they have claimed all of Afghanistan. This while refugees are settling in Wisconsin. We'll hear from one soldier on his experience helping them ahead at six. fresh air, maybe a cool midnight breeze through a window, or the smell of fresh cut grass through a patio door. If your windows or doors aren't letting you enjoy the season, consider Renewal by Anderson Replacement Windows from Wanakee Remodeling. For a limited time, take advantage of our great offer. Renewal by Anderson Windows. Let's crack one open. At J.P. Morgan, the only definition of wealth that matters is yours. It can be a smaller house, but a bigger nest egg, a goal to work toward, or the freedom to walk away. With 200 years of experience, personalized advice, and commission-free trades on an award-winning app, we are working for you. Planning, investing, advice, J.P. Morgan Wealth Management, the light at the end of the tunnel isn't shining so brightly for everyone. Families continue to fight for survival. Some jobs are gone forever. Bills pile up. But please know, you have not been forgotten. Your local Wisconsin energy and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your heat and power on. Apply now for a hand up. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Winner of the National Edward R. Murrow Award for Overall Excellence in Television. A Florida man accused of killing four people in Lakeland, including an infant and its mother, is being held without bond in the Polk County Jail. Polk County officials say 33-year-old Brian Riley is facing four counts of first-degree murder and several other charges. Investigators say Riley is a former Marine sharpshooter who served in Iraq and Afghanistan before being honorably discharged. He had no known connection to his victims. Riley told officials that... He is a survivalist and admits to taking meth. During the shootings, he wore full body armor and engaged in gunfire with deputies. An 11-year-old girl did survive the mass shooting. Her condition is unknown. Riley surrendered after being wounded by deputies. The Taliban claims to have control of all of Afghanistan after seizing the last major province in the country. After surrounding the region of Panjshir, the Taliban intensified fighting over the weekend and have now raised their flag in an apparent sign of victory. Meanwhile, satellite photos of the airport north of Kabul show six passenger planes on the runway. Among 1,000 or so people trying to leave on those planes are dozens of American citizens. Closer to home, a soldier at Fort McCoy is sharing his experience helping Afghan refugees. Fort McCoy now has nearly 9,000 refugees staying at the base. A spokesperson for Fort McCoy says there are just under 1,400 soldiers supporting those refugees. One military member says this is an experience, something he will always remember. Uh, I love being here, actually. So I joined the Army to help out people because I love to help out people. It's one of my, some people would say, bad talents, but... Helping people out is, is possibly the greatest thing that I could ever do. Fort McCoy is gathering donations for the Afghan refugees. We will tell you more about how you can help coming up tonight at 10. Wisconsin Democrats will be visiting Fort McCoy tomorrow. U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin, Representative Ron Kind, and Representative Pocan, along with a few state senators, will brief us on Afghan evacuee operations. We will be streaming that live on our website, channel3000.com. Cleanup after the aftermath of Hurricane Ida is continuing a week later. What President Biden and other Democrats are doing to help those impacted. And a sunny and mild Labor Day. So what's in store for the rest of the week? Meteorologist Dana Fulton will let us know ahead in your certified most accurate forecast.
year-round comfort is our year-round commitment at RG Heating and Air Conditioning. We install quality train equipment and service all brands so your home's furnace and AC will perform their best year-round. RG Heating and AC. Looks like they finally got rid of that trip hazard. They pump it full of mud? It ain't mud, Jack. Where are the patch bolts? Where's the splashed mud? It ain't mud, Jack. Concrete lifting technologies can quickly raise and level any concrete surface using cutting-edge foam technology made in Wisconsin. Fast and accurate and eco-friendly. How did those guys do it? Where are the holes? Where's the mud? It ain't mud, Jack. McGann Furniture in Baraboo reminds you to be sure to ask about delivery options when shopping for new furniture. Because every store is different. Some stores have very specific restrictions, while others charge you an arm and a leg. At McGann's, we take pride in our skilled delivery team, and in most cases, delivery is free. And remember, at McGann's, we don't inflate prices only to mark them down for a sale. Stop in today and discover the difference. You'll be glad you did. McGann Furniture, downtown Baraboo. Attic Angel Community has earned a reputation as the one and only. But what's so memorable to the people who live here? It's good local heart. Interesting friends. The view from my window. Continuing education. The food. The amazing art studio. Family Hour. There are many reasons to love Attic Angel Community. But there's just one Attic Angel. Republicans in Congress are working for the richest 1%. They got caught red-handed blocking economic relief for working people just to protect tax loopholes for the ultra-wealthy. Billionaires so rich, they shoot money into space while they dodge their taxes. Ron Johnson doesn't want the 1% to pay their fair share because he's one of them. It's time to build a stronger economy. MoveOn.org Political Action is responsible for the content of this advertising. At RG Heating and Air Conditioning, our promise to you is 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Guaranteed service, repairs, and replacements. Installing quality train equipment. RG Heating and AC. We'll always treat you like family. Guaranteed. A crisis is unfolding in Louisiana where many people are still struggling to cope with the aftermath of Hurricane Ida. An investigation is underway into conditions at a warehouse where hundreds of nursing home residents rode out the storm. Officials say conditions were unsafe and ordered seven senior living facilities that send patients there to close. These images show patients on mattresses on the floor with no social distancing. Health officials were told the residents were not being fed or even changed. The whole place is reeking of urine and feces. On top of them trying to eat, they're begging for water. These are people's lives. They, they are not animals or dogs. They are human beings and they deserve good treatment. The Louisiana Department of Health reports trying to gain access to inspect this facility, but were denied entry. CBS News has reached out to the nursing home owner, Bob Dean Jr., for a comment. He has not responded to the request. Meanwhile, the cleanup from Ida is ongoing, especially in New Jersey, which had 27 storm-related deaths. President Biden approved major disaster declarations for counties in both New Jersey and in New York. Homeowners and renters who suffered damage could be eligible for as much as $34,000 in FEMA grants for things like temporary housing and repairs. While help is on the way, Democratic politicians are in both states pushing legislation to tackle what they say is driving these storms, climate change. Bipartisan infrastructure bill will help us rebuild. It'll have a lot of money. The reconciliation bill in the cure really starts finally getting a hold of climate change. And in Louisiana, more than half a million people are without power more than a week after the storm. And meteorologist Dana Fulton joins us now with a look at our nice forecast. Our nice forecast, yes, really pleasant outside this afternoon and this evening. Right now we're at 78 in Madison with a clear, sunny sky. There's a light breeze coming in from the northwest right now, generally in the single digits. So it makes things feel pretty comfortable outside if you're out in the sun today. Our Doppler drive has been nice and quiet, which has been good news for anybody traveling around for the Labor Day weekend. Uh, shouldn't have had any issues with the weather for us throughout Wisconsin. Now,
tomorrow we might see an isolated shower pass through. There's a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm before your Tuesday. Otherwise, a mostly dry week expected, extending all the way into the weekend and into the start of next week with some mild temperatures mixed in for us over the next several days. By the weekend, temperatures will climb back up to the 80s. So will be warm after a bit of a pullback for us for the middle of the week. That's along the front that's going to pass through tomorrow. So overnight, we're, we're mostly cloudy for the next few hours. Skies become partly cloudy for early Tuesday morning. And looking ahead to the afternoon, this cold front passes through, bringing a slight chance for a shower or a thunderstorm. I think most of the area is going to stay dry, and I think the best opportunity for rain will be in the southeast corner of the state. Notice our breeze picks up just a little bit more behind that front coming in from the northwest. So it's going to be cooler outside for Tuesday night heading into Wednesday. In fact, we're expecting temps to drop to the mid to low 50s to start off your Wednesday. In the afternoon, we'll have sunshine and high temperatures barely getting to the low 70s for Wednesday afternoon. That severe weather threat really trending well off to the east for Michigan. Again, the southeast corner of the state under a marginal risk, Milwaukee included in that. Could see some thunderstorms popping up to the southeast corner of the state, but I really think that most of our area is going to stay dry tomorrow, and those stronger thunderstorms really trending off to the east for us. Looking ahead to our 6 to 10 day outlook, likely that we're going to hold on to that warmer weather for the middle of the month, and not just for southern Wisconsin, but throughout the country, a warm trend really settling in for mid-September. For this time of year, highs mid to upper 70s, pretty seasonable, very mild for us tomorrow. Yet again, pretty close to 80 for afternoon highs. A little breezy also. Wind speeds about 10 to 20 miles per hour with a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon. Mostly sunny for Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday, we cool down quite a bit, but then we warm back up heading into the weekend. By the weekend, we're back up closer to 80 degrees with partly sunny skies. We're expecting things to stay dry to start next week, but by the middle of the next week, uh, we should have some rain chances starting to build back in temperatures. Again, staying fairly close to average, if not just a little bit above through most of that 10-day forecast act. And coming up in sports, the Badger offense struggled in their first game of the season. While that unit believes they're a whole lot better than what they showed on tape. That's next Thunders News 3 now. Now, first one weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Fry Construction is celebrating 26 years of providing excellence in home improvements. We strive to exceed the expectations of our clients with each and every project we do. Respected by your neighbors and voted best of Madison two years in a row. Best kitchen and bath design, best roofer. Experience the best of Madison for yourself and save 26% off gutters or insulation with any full roofing project. Schedule your consultation today at FryConstruction.com. The Burrish Group at UBS provides comprehensive wealth management focused on client service, financial results, and helping clients pursue their goals. A multi-generational group of financial advisors allows us to relate to all of our clients. Every generation has priorities, and with our experience, we can find a fit that suits your cycle of life. Call us today to start the conversation. When an inland hurricane called a derecho cut a path through the Midwest, we learned some lessons. We learned that most buildings cannot withstand 140 mile per hour winds, not to mention most oak trees. We learned that when your roof is gone or there's a tree in your living room, even eight hours is too long to wait. But most of all, we learned that in hardship, people take care of each other. And that has been our silver lining. Guys, if you're suffering from erectile dysfunction, Peak Performance for Men has a natural solution that can help you today. That's right. Stop wasting money on pill after pill that just masks your ED. Fix it for good. We can make the difference. Call Peak Performance for Men today. At General Heating and Air Conditioning, your comfort is important to us. From keeping you cozy warm to cooling you off with the ultra-quiet, energy-efficient Carrier Infinity Home Comfort System. Plus, join our free home comfort program and keep your air conditioner and furnace running at peak performance year after year. Enjoy priority service and extra savings that really add up. Celebrating 75 years of providing award-winning comfort for your home. Turn to the experts, Carrier and General Heating and Air Conditioning. 
News 3 Now this morning is off Labor Day, but Tuesday we're looking at children's mental health as they head back to school. And Consumer Reports tells us which antivirus software works and which ones don't. Join us from 4.30 to 7. The Badger offense had a lot of hype surrounding it heading into the season. Graham Mertz was back under center for year two as a starter. They added Ches Malusi from Clemson and all the weapons returned. And then came game day and the offense just couldn't finish. Four scoreless trips inside the Penn State 25, three turnovers and one big head scratch. But after watching the film, the Badgers are confident in themselves that they can fix all those mental mistakes. We are a really good offense and I'm confident that we are a really good offense. Um, so it's important not to look back and kind of dwell and that will only make us worse if we kind of focus on that one and if we just kind of let it go on this week's prep, then I think we'll be pretty good. When I'm playing good ball and we're all playing together, there's, it's hard to beat us. And that gives me the confidence and it will nev never falter, never at all. Don't forget to tune into this week's Badger Blueprint on Wednesday during the News 3 Now at 10. Wisconsin State Journal columnist Jim Polzine and I will break down what went wrong for UW against Penn State and what they'll have to do against Eastern Michigan to get that first win of the season. Last night was a debut to remember for former Badger quarterback Jack Cohn in his first start with the Irish. Cohn threw for 366 yards and four touchdowns to lead Notre Dame past Florida State in overtime, and he did it in record-setting fashion. The 366 passing yards are the most in a season opener in school history. Remember, Wisconsin will face off against Cohn and Notre Dame on September 25th at Soldier Field. Alex Erickson has a new home. The former Darlington standout and Badger wideout has signed on with the Panthers practice squad. And the franchise hopes he'll be able to add a boost to their special teams. In five seasons with the Bengals, Erickson caught 93 passes for 1,086 yards and a touchdown. Brewers opening up a three-game series with the Phillies, and boy, was this bad. First inning, Bryce Harper. Nearly hits a car with his two-run blast, and just like that, the crew are down a pair, and it would only get worse from there. Eighth inning, the Phillies, they scored seven runs. Former Brewer Gene Segura with a grand slam. A brew crew fall 12-0 the final. Dana, that's more like a football score there. Yeah, that's uh, not exactly what we want to see there on the scoreboard. Good news weather at least giving us a nice stretch for the next few days. Tomorrow highs will be in the upper 70s. We'll have partly sunny skies for your Tuesday with a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon. For Wednesday, mostly sunny, a little cooler outside though. Behind that rain chance, we cool down a bit. Low 70s for Wednesday, mid 70s on Thursday. So that warming trend carries us into the weekend. We hold on to sunshine and dry weather into the weekend with 80 degrees settling in for Saturday and Sunday and staying with us likely into the start of next week with our next rain chance holding off until we get into the middle of next week. So quite a dry stretch expected in overall. Some pretty nice temperatures as we start to move through the middle of September by the end of that 10 day. Not a bad transition, Dana. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Enjoy your evening and we'll see you back here at 10.